Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail uh, how to construct a 95% confidence interval uh, for a population mean. But in this particular calculation, we're going to assume that the population standard deviation is known in advance. This typically isn't always the case, but in this particular scenario, we're going to assume that the population standard deviation is known. Uh, and because the population standard deviation is known, this confidence interval can be constructed uh, by using this particular formula here. Uh, that says that once you know the sample mean x bar, once you know the population standard deviation sigma, once you know the standard, sorry, once you know the sample size n, okay, that we can construct a lower bound for the true population mean, and we can construct an upper bound for the true population mean. Okay, uh, that's within Z standard deviations. Uh, okay, well, it's based off uh, Z standard deviations uh, on, on on either side. This particular Z value is calculated and is associated with the particular size of the interval that we want to calculate. So let's have a look at this scenario. This is the same scenario that we used uh, when we constructed the 90% confidence interval. So let's assume that 24 cans of beer have been randomly selected from a production line and that the average fill of the 24 cans is 495 mils and also and as I stated earlier on the population standard deviation is known and also uh, that the population process standard deviation is 7 mils okay well, this is important here this population standard deviation being given in advance okay so what parameters and what statistics are we given okay well we're given the x bar we're given the sample mean so x bar we're told is equal to 495 mils uh, we're given the sample size n. Okay, sorry. We're given x bar. The average fill is 495 mils. We're given the sample size, which is 24. Okay. We're given the population standard deviation, which is 7 mils. So sigma is equal to 7. And what we don't know is we don't know the z score that's associated with a 95% confidence interval. Okay. And we need to calculate that. Okay? But let's just uh, rationalize uh, what the z score uh, should be, okay, and where it should reside in relation to a standard normal curve. Okay. Uh, so what we have is we have a standard normal curve, okay, it looks something like this, okay, the standard normal curve centered on zero. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to identify a z score, let's call this z1, and another z score, let's say z2, uh, such that 95% of the area is between these two z scores. 95% of the area is between the two z-scores. Uh, well, what does that mean about the tails? That means that the tails must accommodate, in total, the tails must accommodate 5%, okay? Which means that this tail here must accommodate 2.5%, and this tail on the left-hand side must accommodate 2.5%, okay? Because of the symmetry of the curve, okay? Let's just concentrate on this right-hand tail now. So let's concentrate on the right-hand tail which we can do because of symmetry, right hand tail area. Okay, let's just concentrate on this for a moment. Okay, okay. so looking at the right hand tail area, okay, so we have our standard normal distribution centered on zero. Uh, we need a z score, okay, okay. this particular z score over here, okay, and the area to the right hand side of it must be 2.5% which in a decimal is 0 0.025, okay? So if the area to the right-hand side of this z-score must be 0 0.025, well, then that means that the area to the left-hand side of the z-score uh, must be 0 0.975, okay? So that the area to the left-hand side must be 0 0.975, okay? Now, we can actually find a z score by looking up tables, we can find the appropriate z score that ha does have 0 0.975 of the area to the left hand side of it by looking up a set of tables that are associated with the standard normal distribution. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that now. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go to our tables. Okay, so the tables that I have, okay, uh, have z scores listed across the first row and down the first column, here's my z-scores. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an area of 0 0.975. Well, 0 0.9750, let's say. Now, you probably can't really see this here, okay? But that the z-score that I require is 0 0.9750, okay? 
which is, I'll just bring this up a little bit closer, okay, which is here, okay, which you probably can't really see it too well. It's on the row 1.90 and it's under the column 0 0.06. So this is this particular area resides on the row 1.90 and it resides on the column 0 0.06. So the Z score associated with 0 0.975 of the area to the left hand side is 1.96. It's 1.90 plus 0 0.06. Okay. So now that we have this particular Z score, okay, so what we know now is this is that our Z score, okay, the Z score that we require is actually equal to it's equal to 1.96. So now we have all of our parameters, so now we can actually do the calculation, which is filling all of our parameters and our statistics into this particular formula, which will allow us to calculate a lower bound, and will also allow us to calculate an upper bound for a 95% confidence interval. So let's do that calculation. Okay. Uh, let's just keep in mind our formula again, okay. the formula for a confidence interval, so our confidence interval, interval formula. Okay, so our confidence interval formula says that it's x bar plus z times sigma over the square root of n must be less than the population mean, which must be less than x bar. Oh, sorry. Oops, this is a minus here. Okay, so it's minus. It uh, must be less than, let me rewrite that out again, a little bit neater there. Okay, uh, so the confidence interval that we require, the confidence interval Okay, formula okay, is that x bar minus z, our z score, times our population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size must be less than the population mean, which must be less than our sample mean plus our z score times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. Okay. Now we know all of these values. We've we've calculated them. We've, we've we've identified them from the scenario, and we've calculated the appropriate z score that goes along with a 95% confidence interval. So I suppose substituting these values into our formula, well, x bar is 495, so this becomes 495 minus the z score is 1.96, so it's 1.96 times sigma, which is 7, and that needs to be divided by the square root of 24. That that value must be less than the population mean, which must be less than x bar, which is 495, plus 1.96 times the population standard deviation, which is 7, divided by the square root of 24. Okay. So let's do this in stages. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll do this particular, I suppose, term here, which is the same as this term with the exception of the signs. So we do, it's 1.96 times seven, we're doing the numerator first, that gives us a value of 13.72. So this reduces down to 495 minus 13.72 divided by the square root of 24, must be less than mu, which must be less than 495, plus 13.72 divided by the square root of 24, okay? Let's do our division. I'm going to divide this by the square root of 24, which gives us a value of 2.8005, which is about 2.80. So this is 495 minus 2.80 is less than mu, is less than 495 plus 2.80. Okay. Uh, so we have 495 minus 2.80 gives us a value of 492.2 must be less than mu, which must be less than 497.8. Okay, and this is our interval. Okay, here's the lower bound 492.2 mils, and here's the upper bound 497.8 mils. And what we are is what we know now is that we're 90%, so 95% confident, yeah, okay, that the true population mean. In other words, the true average fill of these cans uh, should be between 492.2 mils and 497.8 mils. But we might be wrong. The true population mean might reside outside of these particular bounds, but should only reside outside of the bounds uh, approximately 5% of the time. So let's draw this on an interval. Okay? So what we have is our interval, so the actual interval itself. 
Okay, let's have a look at this. So we have our interval. We have our lower bound, which is 492.2. We have our upper bound, which is 497.8. And I suppose what we are is we are 95% confident okay that the true population mean is in that range okay so that the true population mean the true mu is between 492.2 mils and 497 mils okay but we might be wrong it is still possible that the true population mean okay is actually outside of those particular bounds okay but this should only happen approximately 5% of the time Okay, guys, uh, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, this, particular, this particular video uh, was detailing how to construct a 95% confidence interval for a population mean. More importantly, assuming that the population standard deviation is known, okay, in which case we're relying upon a Z distribution. Okay. Uh, so I hope this video was somewhat intuitive and helpful. Uh, and once again, thank you for your time. Okay, bye bye.